Oh, yeah, that's right. I should have done the countdown. That's okay. Too late. We're started. Hey, people. Uh, Brandon always does a countdown in his, here we in are. his uh, Brandon voice every time. Yeah. So. Yeah, I try to do it like the Halo voice, like five, <laughs> four, three, I don't know, something like that. Just gets deeper and deeper as the numbers That's right. descend. Five, four, <laughs> three. I don't know, I can't go, I can't go much <laughs> deeper than that. That's got about there. all I got. Your well, problem is you started we're, too, hot, too low. <laughs> we're, yeah, I started too low to begin with. I should have started higher. Uh, well, we're at an unknown number of episodes because I've lost track, but yeah. here we are again. It's either eight or know. nine. If you're still listening to us, then I guess you're still listening to us. You know, congratulations. We appreciate all the yeah, viewership. Yeah, we virtually appreciate you. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. So this uh, is kind of appreciation. <laughs> uh, the one uh, I do in my head silently to myself. Yeah, yeah. As long as I don't have to express it, we're good. Um, <laughs> I want everyone else to know that I'm uh, without having to say it. Oh, saying, my gosh. saying words is hard that's why we started a podcast <laughs> um <laughs> yeah that's right <laughs> that doesn't make sense at all <laughs> nope uh, it sh- it hey man i went first last time i think you gotta go first this time oh good i got a nice super deep super heady one just to oh good start everything off with and so you want me just you want me to say one word and then you just say one word and we can just sit with it we can marinate in the juices of the power of the one okay. word and then, so I'll say the one word. It's, I feel like I'm casting a spell or something. And then we'll just get you your say initial... Say with an accent. Uh, Eastern European one. accent. This one might not work with that. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then we'll get your... Uh, you can just give your initial thoughts on it first. Okay. Uh, but the word is transfiguration. <gasps> <laughs> can you use it in a sentence? <laughs> mm. No, that's uh, not a word I would use normally. Yeah, no, it's like the spelling bee thing where, you know, it's like, can you use it in a sentence? Definition, please. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so the, what do you think? What do you think of when you hear that? The transfiguration of my buttock muscles after doing many glute bridges. <laughs> um, <laughs> there you go. Well, I mean, uh, uh, aside from all my coarse jesting, uh, it, it just brings <laughs> me right into the Gospels where Jesus was transfigured. And you have Mm -hmm. some of the disciples seeing him, you know, Mm -hmm. so it makes me think of like God in the fullness of his glory and people witnessing that. But that's my initial thought with transfiguration. Is that your intention or was there more something different? I didn't even have an intention. I just, uh, (laughs) I mean, I have thoughts about it, but I was just kind of curious, like where, I mean, I'm guessing probably a lot of Christian people's minds go that way. Um, Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's like, you know. What does that like look like to you? You know, like, is it a transformation of your personality? Is it a transformation of your like Mm. essence or because it's like you could just use the word transformation, you know, to imply Mm. a change. But like transfiguration, I guess, to me implies like even something more like, is it the fundamental nature of something changing? Is it, uh, you know, that kind of thing? You know, that's interesting. What's the difference between transformation and transfiguration? It feels like it's the same thing. Like one is form, one is figure. Mm-hmm. I don't know. What's only there's are, a definition just, for this. Yeah, there's probably some <laughs> Google thing that we could look at right now, but that's an interesting thought to transform. Yeah. I mean, as soon as you start saying transform, you start thinking of Optimus Prime and the Transformer <laughs> cars, you know? It's like things yeah. that it can switch back and forth between different different forms of existence. Mm-hmm. But transfiguration, it's like your figure is different, which works really well with that whole glute thing that I was talking the about. First, but, you know. The first definition for transformation is an act, process, or instance of transforming or being transformed. Oh boy. Mm. <laughs> I love when they use the word in the definition. <laughs> to transform means to transform. <laughs> <laughs> so transform actually just means to change in composition or structure, to mm. change the outward form or appearance of, to change in character or condition. Mm. While transfiguration is a change in form or appearance, <laughs> an mm. exalting, glorifying, or spiritual change. Oh, interesting. that's interesting. But uh, yeah, so that's, I mean, I definitely think about it in the spiritual context most of the time, so Mm -hmm. it makes sense to me, but so all my thoughts that led to this and why it's inspiring 
is basically I think it's so we I don't know like in the Bible you see it as like a a singular event right or like mostly as a singular event like you know he was transfigured at this moment but my thought about it is like it's it's probably more of just like a a constant force like spiritual force happening at all mm. times right like you know in your daily life you're constantly like i i I think of like the renewing of the mind type stuff or, mm. you know, the verses like that, where it's like, you're being continuously refined. It's like, to me, that kind of speaks towards continual tr transfiguration, I guess. And I don't know, maybe I'll get your thoughts on this. Do you think that's like a transfiguration is only like a Jesus thing, God thing, or do you think it's like also a human thing? It's interesting. Cause when I think about Jesus transfiguring, and even within the, the definition that you gave from our little search there, you know, it makes me think of him having a true form that was like his higher glorified form. And then his like humble form of being, you know, human on earth. And it's almost like he revealed, he like took back his like fake shadow form and revealed his true form. And so I think, you know, I, I want to say that maybe... Gosh, I want to say that like this is something, an idea that C.S. Lewis wrote out in one of his books. I cannot remember, so I might be misquoting. But the idea that a true human being made in the image of God was the human beings as God made us in the Garden of Eden. And then we fell from that. So in, in a sense, we're almost in like a shadow form of who we are right now. And, mm -hmm. you know, whenever you're walking in the spirit of God or when we're in heaven with the Lord, then we're showing our true form of how God made us to be. So I could see that there could be like a transfiguration with humans, but I don't know if that's something that we'd see like in the here and now, or maybe we just see like, you know, dimly through a mirror, like we only see like bits and pieces of it now. I don't know. That's yeah. interesting. But that's kind of, like that's kind of how I, I think of that. Yeah. It makes me think that it's like not maybe a singular moment for us, but like a lifetime or like a process. So mm. it's like, it happens over slowly because I mean, that's everyone's goal, right? Is to improve, I mean, improve as much, you know, as much as that means, but just to like, you know, you're always trying to reach towards the next level. You're always trying to, you know, the drop the sin or whatever, or all these things. So it's like, like if your life is a work, then you're working towards something or some higher, higher good, you mm. know? So but yeah, it's, uh, I don't know. I think what's interesting to me about the whole idea of, um, basically the idea, oh man, <laughs> trying to c compose all my thoughts it's, on the It's fly. a deep thought, man. Dig deep into it. Yeah. But, uh, so like the idea that, you know, people like were whole and that, you know, there's like something missing and like people are trying to get back to that state. Mm. The way I like, it's interesting because to me, there's almost an element of like, cause they're like, I think there's a lot of want to get back to the garden. You know, people like want to go back to the garden and it's like, that was the state where everything was in harmony. That was where everything was good. But I almost think there's like a better good that like mm. comes through the journey and comes through all like the lows and the suffering that's like a better outcome than even that and which is, what's interesting to me is that like in revelation you know like there is a garden right but um it's not just like the garden of eden again it's actually like a garden and a city like mm. you know within each other and so like it's almost this merging of like the city is like in a lot of traditions, I guess represents like technology or something or like some sort of, like, you know, it's a man-made thing. It's like not natural per se. And so it's like this melding of like technology and nature in harmony. And so it's, it's to me, it might, it looks like it might be a symbol of, you know, kind of 
all the things we've taken from earth or like our journey, like humanity's journey through like history and earth and melding them like in harmony, finally with like the garden, like it was mm. like meant to be originally. Mm. And so like, there's almost this that you not only got what you're missing from the garden and like got back there, but then you also like even went above and beyond, you know, to new heights, I guess. Mm. So that was just kind of a tangent. <laughs> <laughs> do you think that the idea of transfiguration because there's a way that Jesus did it where it was almost like revealing his true glorious self mm -hmm. you know he transfigured but do you think that for us do you think that it's the same as that or do you think it's almost more like the concept of sanctification like you're slowly improving yourself like you were talking about removing sin and becoming more and more holy yeah. you know yeah, that might be. Yeah, I, it's a good it's a good point to bring up because it's like Jesus didn't have sin, so his transfiguration was literally just revealing his true glory. Versus for us, it's like if we're gonna get to a a, a more glorified state, mm -hmm. you know, are we is transfiguration for us just showing more of the the good? stuff that god gave us or is it like sanctification taking away the bad i don't know so what do you so it's like once you get to a certain like once you're sanctified fully or something then you're like then you become transfigured maybe or something yeah you go to super saiyan mode i don't know yeah that is an interesting one because but the fact that like huh yeah that is interesting because but you would think like okay if it's if it's just like when you're holy, then you're transfigured, then Jesus could have been transfigured at any moment in time. But like, it wasn't a very specific moment. Mm. So it's like, but the say, so here's the question is sanctification, something that's like, uh, is it something that's like happening to you or is it something you're making happen through like better works? I guess. That's the oh, that's interesting. Yeah, like are we becoming holy because the Holy Spirit is doing that to us, yeah. or are we like choosing behavior modification to make ourselves, you know, less bad? Yeah, more holy. Oh, that's an interesting thought. Gosh, huh? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it kind of comes back to the idea of like, what's the purpose of sanctification? It's like if you're forgiven of sin, and you're choosing to behave in a way that would honor God and not be sinful, you know, are, are you doing that for, like, it seems like you're doing that for more temporary reasons, you know, like you're yeah. doing that so that you can, you know, make disciples, you can follow God here on earth, but it's not necessarily doing that so that you will be like forgiven of your sins because you were already forgiven of your sins you know so it seems like it's more in order to obey the like commandments of god for here on earth yeah you know like is that going to change your your standing with god in heaven i mean i think it can in terms of like treasures in heaven and like rewards of Maybe what God would give people or something like that. I don't know. So here's That's another question then. So is, mm -hmm. is sanctification, is that something that is like a force that changes the way you operate in the world? So it's like as you become more sanctified, does that then affect how you live out your life outside of your own choices? Hmm. So it's like if it is a process and it's like continuously happening to you, like, does it, you know, reduce your impulses or your desires or like, does mm. it turn your thoughts towards God more often? Yeah, you know, because I don't necessarily think I see sanctification as purely just a do not sin. I think I see sanctification also as following God in a positive sense, not just a don't do the negatives. You know, mm -hmm. I think it's both of those. I think it's it's both don't sin and Christian disciplines and practical things of praying more, read the Bible more. How do you serve others, worshiping God? You know, what are the things that make you draw closer to God? I think it's both of those things together. And mm -hmm. when both of those things happen, 
that's the you know being holy being set apart from the, the community of the world that doesn't follow those kinds of things i think that's the the sanctification idea you know and so that's so is the sanctification then more a force that's acting upon you at that point like if it's acting upon you so it's like right or are you is there some way you're conjuring that or is it like mostly a force outside of you hmm well, then we get kind of into the free will conversation. You know? <laughs> I always try to take it back there. That's, so. that's, uh, we got there. Know. It only took, what, <laughs> 15 minutes and 30 seconds? <laughs> yeah. I mean, even if, even if you think that people, you know, because then, I mean, you go really deep down the rabbit hole with that because maybe you can have the conversation about free will with salvation you know are you predestined as a free will how does that work mm -hmm. but then if you get into also post salvation do people not have free will then it's like do we have free will in anything you know then only, it's, only the choice to want to be sanctified or not and is it is it just like a general choosing but you don't really choose the details of it throughout the day you know or is it yeah. like a it's it's like your life you could you could say you want to be somewhere in 80 years do you think you're going to be there in 80 years not even close hmm. you know like you can you can say all you want but you're gonna you might get hit by a bus before then you know and hmm. like not, ne never be able to do it or you know you can you can wish all these things and try to plan the best you can but it's never going to be exactly like you plan it like, yeah it's going to be outside your control you know well, I mean, circumstances might be outside your control, but in the context of sanctification, that's behavior, you know, that's reaction to circumstances, you know, what, what you choose to do with yourself. Well, that's, and, that's what, that's why I was asking you is like, is sanctification a force that like acts upon you or is it like, or is it something that you have to do, like that you do, you know? Yeah, I don't think, I don't think it's a force that acts upon you. I mean, I think maybe the Holy Spirit acts in a supporting role or mm -hmm. an, an inspiring role, you could say, mm -hmm. um, you know, it might give you thought and motivation and things like that. But I think that ultimately it comes down to the behavior of the person, the choice of the person, you know, is that what, that's what's like is the sanctification part. Yeah. Because I mean, if, if it was purely the, you know, Holy Spirit, making a person more sanctified <clears throat> then what happens when a person's not being sanctified if a person sins then it's like oh it wasn't my fault it was god's fault because he didn't like sanctify me you know I, and then <laughs> and then, yeah it's like and then it almost seems like god caused you to sin and you know god doesn't cause people to sin so i don't think you know or tempt people to sin so i don't i don't think it could be a a, a loss of free will I think that it has to be like the person's choice to behave in a certain way. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Cause like I, a lot of times or a lot of the way I see it is like, it's a journey, I guess. And so the fact that there is like sin along the way, isn't like the, the defining factor, I guess it's more of like the trajectory, which defines the, the overall story i guess you know i would agree with you yeah and so it's like whether or not you sin is like almost irrelevant it's like it's gonna happen everybody knows it mm -hmm. <laughs> you know but it's it's the the story of how that's how you overcome it how it like how you work around it how you know you you uh progress past it how you you know yeah. carry yourself after it how you repent how you all these things you know that that come from it that's more that tells more of the whole story i guess mm. and so it's like i don't like i mean obviously god cares about sin as much as in it in as i would say in as much as like it's about the like not things not lining up with the nature the created nature you know like or his mm -hmm. divine nature so i think that's where like sin matters is that like things are out of alignment but like as far as like you being out of that alignment it's like it's part of the journey i guess and yeah so, 
Yeah, I I do agree with you on that. I I think I view the trajectory almost like watching the stock market, you know? It's like <laughs> not it's right going now, to but... <laughs> yeah, not necessarily right now. Like hopefully it's on a positive, you know, up into the not, right trajectory there. Not but, even close. <laughs> but you know, just in the way that it's like you put money in stocks and then hopefully, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. it's going to go on a an overall trajectory in an upward, you know, the numbers are going up over the years. Mm-hmm. And you're going to see all kinds of scratch marks going up and down, up and down, up and down. But yeah. you just want to look at like, okay, 10 years ago, it was way lower. And then where it is ter- currently or where I'm predicting it's going to be 10 years later is hopefully going to be twice as much or a much higher number, whatever it is, you know? Yeah. And so that's that's the goal. And I can totally see that in the Christian life as well. It's like you're kind of looking at, okay, there's all kinds of little ups and downs on the daily basis of sin and not sin. Don't get mm-hmm. bogged down in that. Look at the long-term trajectory. Am I a more mature christian today than i was 10 years ago yes i am okay well i've i'm i'm going in the right direction right so i I agree with you on that yeah for sure and like while god doesn't cause sin or whatever i i think he just uses it to be honest it's Mm. like like how many terrible situations have you had where or maybe not terrible situations but like you know non lining up with god's nature situations have you had that like you learned a ton from you know and mm-hmm. it's like god probably you know didn't cause that situation it's our own you know human nature but at the same time like it propelled you forward and made you learn from it and pushed you in a good direction because of it you know yeah. like ooh, i'd never do that again or like you know wow like i have so much more insight into maybe the pain of somebody else because i've experienced that same pain from making that same mistake or yeah. you know just like different things where it's you know, something non-ideal happened, but you needed to experience that to be able to like reach out to that person or to to share that connection or something or learn a lesson for yourself. So yeah, like I think it's yeah. very much used. And if you just got rid of all that and said, okay, you're just fully sanctified, you might miss out on like a very, uh, very a uh, much deeper knowledge, I guess, of God in some ways. Mm. So it's like, it's kind of like taking the the apple. It's like, it's not good, but it can be used for good, you know, like ultimately. Yeah. And maybe that's what the, maybe instead of transfiguration, I'm thinking of like redemption or something where mm. it's like, you know, you, you take something fallen and then restore it into a, like a new state. And so, yeah. Yeah, I think about how in Proverbs it describes that, you know, a, f- a fool is somebody who doesn't listen to, f- to discipline. You mm-hmm. know, it's like they get reproved and they just keep doing the same thing. <laughs> and it's like if you make a mistake in life and you get the the wisdom and the insight from that mistake to choose and make better decisions after that, then that was like wisdom from God. You know, you could have just Mm -hmm. been a fool and it was like, well, (laughs) I gambled all my money away. So I just got to get more money so I can keep gambling. gambling." You know, it's like, it's like it could happen twice in a row. (laughs) Yeah. There's no way it could happen twice. Like, you know, I got (laughs) the house can't always win. You know, Um, (laughs) you know, it's like if you, if you don't learn from your mistake, that's, that's like the, the Mm -hmm. sin of not following god you know the wisdom of god like allows you to self-reflect see what you did wrong oops Mm -hmm. i shouldn't have done that how could i make better decisions in the future and then you make changes that are wiser that's you know divine wisdom and knowledge i think that uh you can definitely improve from so do you feel like your life is on a stock market upward trajectory being transformed into something greater i Maybe I shouldn't have used the whole stock market thing because I don't know <laughs> I don't if know, I want my you. life my life trajectory to be associated with the stock market compared trends to, compared to as Wall long, Street. As long you know, I try to just be twelve percent better every day or whatever, <laughs> every year or something. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. No, I definitely do. Yeah, I feel like I look back into my life, and you know, in in terms of like holiness and sanctification and who I am as like a Christian person, I definitely feel like maturity, wisdom of life, following God improves as I get older. 
But I think that there are other things like if I were to look at my other areas of life, like my playfulness or physicality or, you know, it's like, I don't know if I'm quite as athletic as I used to be. I don't know if mm -hmm. I'm quite as playful as a person. I think I'm a little bit more boring as a person <laughs> now, you know, than I used to be. I don't know. There's some, there's other things that maybe are, are like going downhill in a certain way for me. And I don't know, maybe that's a good thing. Maybe that's just natural. Yeah. But yeah, in terms of following God, it plays the devil. No, I don't know. <laughs> plays the devil. No, you I'm reading a, first. I'm reading, I got it right here on my, on my, reading this book right now about play. Oh. <laughs> I'm literally reading a book about it. That's anyway, funny. <laughs> it's my second time reading that book. Mm. So it yeah, sits, no, it sits on my bookshelf devil. right underneath this book. Which I'm almost done with, by the way. Ooh, almost done. Oh with. my gosh, we got to talk about that after the podcast. Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, that's the oh. book. Quivering. <laughs> got the shivers. Yeah, the book shivers. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's funny. Yeah, yeah. Well, if anyone's wondering, it's called the language of creation. I think. <laughs> yeah, the language of creation. I, would I don't know how to say anywhere. his name. It's yeah, like it's Matthew. Uh, Matthew. Pajau. Pajau. Pajau, yeah. Pajau. It's a French, French Canadian, if that helps. Yeah. To pronounce anything. Get Patrick or Pat to pronounce it for you. That's right. <laughs> but yeah, uh, wow, no, I'm totally derailed. I'm just going to think about that book. Super the derailed. The yeah. Anyway. Um, Transfiguration. But yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, it is interesting to see. Because again, maybe like going back to last week when we or a couple weeks ago when we talked about like measurement you know it's it's like what do you trans i guess that transfiguration or whatever you want to call it that redemption or upward process it like definitely matters what you measure it against you know if you're measuring it mm -hmm. against your athletic ability that's going to go down i guess so it's like mm -hmm. you know not everything i guess is all up in this life yeah <laughs> For, for better or worse but you know. yeah yeah i think it's more of a question of am i becoming you know in the sense of transfiguration am i becoming more like the true glory of god that he designed me to be yeah. and if the if the true if the image of god that i'm made in is based solely on my physical body then yeah. no, it's constantly going downhill. You know, it's yeah. there is no improving that really. But if it's something based more spiritual and more based on your identity and your mindset and emotional behavior and things like that, then yeah, yeah. it's always going up as I get older. You know, interesting. So yeah, I would like to ask you about that. What is what is like that core like thing? I guess is it just like your soul, like just existing, or is it well? You know, yeah, because see, then you get into interesting questions about what about folks who have dementia, you know, mm -hmm. and they completely change as a person. And yeah. it's like, are, you know, if, if somebody was like a loving Christian person and then they get dementia and so you literally, they have a dysfunction in their brain mm -hmm. is that, and then they misbehave and they're doing all kinds of things that maybe are sinful or not being the wonderful Christian person they were before. It's like, is that a, a deterioration of their spiritual being or is that a deterioration of their physical being and we should discredit their misbehavior because maybe it's not truly who they are inside spiritually, you know, or who they were before or something like that. So then it's like, what's the true essence of God that he like delivered to us? I, don't, I think that that's a spiritual thing. I don't know if that would necessarily be physical, even like your mental capacity I don't know if that's even necessarily like the true sense of the image of God, even though you can compare the intelligence of humans versus animals and okay, maybe the image of God is like having reason and our mental capacities. I don't know. Cause even yeah. if your like mental capacities are lost, you know, in some way it's like, are you no longer like if somebody's in a coma, are they no longer in the image of God? You know, mm -hmm. like, I, I think that it's gotta be deeper than that. Yeah, which is why I think like even in the Bible, it's like there's a level of respect to give animals and all these th different things, you know. So, you know, like different amounts of sparks of life or whatever, or I guess that's how you would say it. But mm. yeah, it's uh, yeah, like what is that deeper thing that you know you're you're trying to shed to reveal or 
you know, that is being worked towards, I guess, you know? And so for me, I do think it is a lot just of, like you said, the image of God, whatever that, like that means, I guess, of just mm -hmm. like a, a self that's maybe, I would say it has a lot to do with like, maybe like truth in a weird sense where it's like, like your your inner self but without any of the bs <laughs> mm -hmm. of like you know um like ego type stuff or like walls you would put up or mm -hmm. like pretenses you know just being being that being yourself without yeah without uh putting up walls would be a probably a way I would say it you know you're you're making me realize the earlier I was talking about the C.S. Lewis quote and again mm -hmm. I think I'm possibly misquoting him because I don't remember exact reference I'll of just it make but it your own quote now I know I'm making it up and this is my <laughs> quote inspired by something that C.S. Lewis may or may not have said um, but I it, it goes something along the lines that if God made you in his image without sin then the truest version of you is who you are with God, right? Like the true identity of you, the most secure version of yourself, like you being true to yourself and the real version of Brandon is the mm -hmm. version that God made me to be. And in sin and in the fallen world, I'm like a distorted version of that, you know? Mm -hmm. And so it's like following God is being true to myself. You yeah, know? it's like being true to the origins of who I'm meant to be as a person. Yeah, and it sounds like a cheesy thing, you know, when it when like it's said in a kind of new age way of like just follow your heart and be true to yourself, mm -hmm. you know. But when you say it in that the way you just said it, it's like much more profound and <laughs> you know, like yeah. actually meaningful. Which it, what's interesting to me is like after the fall, it's like the first like to me, like what takes you away from that true self state is um like adding layers you know so it's like the first thing after the fall is like they put on clothing it's like add, literally mm -hmm. adding a layer to like add separation between you and the world you know or you and god in the garden and all this kind of stuff you know and there's like that symbology there um and so you know like stripping back the layers then is like both i guess Maybe not physically, but more metaphorically. <laughs> I don't like... know, man. It sounds like what you're saying is that true transformation, <laughs> transfiguration, is getting naked. Yep. Maybe we should go to the nudist colony. That's, that's they, they got it all figured out. That's the biggest takeaway I just got from this episode. <laughs> <laughs> uh, too cold for that in this, this uh, season. Yeah, uh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that's that's pretty much all my thoughts on that. I think. Yeah, man. And, yeah. yeah. I'm glad we got to explore it. Yeah. yeah. That's a good one. All right. So, uh, do All you right. want to do a one word for me, too? Yeah. Gonna, I have one word. Prepared? I've been sitting on this one for like a couple of weeks now. And there's some tie in to the one that you just said. And mm -hmm. I was almost thinking that I should change it last minute in the Oof. past 30 minutes. But no, I'm not going to change it. I'm just doubling down. I'm sticking to it. Okay. <laughs> nice. So I'll say my one word and I'll just let you react. Okay. The word is legacy. <gasps> hmm. What do I think of when I think of legacy? Seeing a lot of legs? No. <laughs> <laughs> the legs I see. <laughs> yeah. Uh... <laughs> oh, that's funny. Just ruined that word for me. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Uh, now we're going to go off. Uh, legacy, legacy. I mean, there's a, the obvious definition, right, of, like, leaving a legacy. Yeah, I, I would, like, the first things that pop to mind would probably be, like, a lot of, like, historical figures, you know, that, like, were concerned with legacy and also left a legacy, you know, just, mm -hmm. like people in the Roman Roman emperors and like being very concerned with that. You know, people like Alexander the Great, a lot of conquerors, I guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like people I would think about, but it's like a blessing and a curse, you know, cause it's like, 
you you do all these things and then you don't get to like see how much people appreciated you even though that's all you craved in life mm. <laughs> or not appreciated you but remembered you you know mm -hmm. like, but you don't get to appreciate it yeah if you were to think about like you know definitely the legacy of historical figures um you know people who have been written into the the history books for sure right there's legacy there but if you were to think about legacy maybe that wouldn't be inside of the history books like the, the legacy of your family you know you think about like generations of your family or, or even themes within your fam family whether like good or bad whatever it is you know do you feel like there's legacy there to be found not really no hmm. like it's kind of weird because um like, I don't even really know anything past my grandparents. Hmm. So I never, I mean, a couple of my great grandparents were alive. Yeah, great. Were alive, like, when I was young, but I never talked to them. Like, none of my family really talks about any, like, history of theirs. Hmm. So I don't really, like, hear about, you know, my great grandparents at all. Um, even my grandparents, like, they were kind of just, I don't know, like, yeah, I don't know. But mm. Maybe they were, like, traumatized by, like, the era they grew up in, World War II-ish era or something. Or, mm. But, um, like, I know my grandma's Hungarian, so she was, like, escaping the Soviets during that era, and a lot of mm. terrible things happened. So, so I'm sure mm. there's some, like, trauma and stuff there that doesn't want to resurface. But, uh, yeah, so it's, like... I feel like I know my parents pretty well and mm -hmm. kind of like the things they did. And like, even today I was having a conversation with my mom and we were talking about, you know, just kind of like, like how much do I remember as a kid, you know, like what was the dynamic and, you know, like memories and like what might've been going on on there on her end, you know, and stuff. So, mm. um, like even still working that out and trying to like figure out, you know, like everyone's perspective at any given time in history. Mm. So yeah, I don't know. What about you? Yeah. Do you feel like you have a family legacy? Yeah, I mean, it just kind of depends on how you're defining legacy. If you're thinking of it as like, um, and I'll I'll get into my legacy legacy spiel here. Yeah. But if you think Can about legacy, oh yeah, go ahead. I almost think of legacy and like a family as like a shared identity. You know, oh yeah, it's like like we're leather workers, or you know, yeah. we're like the farmer people, you know, and so that's like then the then the kids like take that on and then like continue the trend. But yeah. Yeah. I, I think about it in terms of like, what's a theme of a family that like mm. the generations pass down to the next family, you know? And mm -hmm. I think about it almost in like medieval times when there was like a family mm. crest and it was like, we <laughs> are the, you know, yeah. Brandenburg people and we farm mm. onions and this is all yeah. that we do. And we're you very know, it's even, angry people. Yeah, and we're angry. Uh, or, you know, there, it's, it's that way in some of these vineyards, you know, it's just because mm. I've studied wine a little bit and read some books on it. You know, there are vineyards where families in Italy or France, it's like we're the 10th generation of our family to run this vineyard and to make this wine. Like we yeah. are winemakers, you know, like that is our legacy. Mm -hmm. And I think that a lot of people make their legacy around the idea of um, a... A profession, you know, the Baker family, it's, you know, the, <laughs> the Smiths, you know, it's yeah. like people make a, a, a profession because it gets passed, passed down father to son and it, you know, goes through a family. But you think about like, what are other things that could be a legacy? And one of the things that comes to mind is what's our legacy in Christ, you know, because in the mm -hmm. Bible, it talks about how we inherit uh, you know, the salvation of God through Jesus. And, you know, the Gentiles are grafted on in the branch and into the family of like Abraham to be like the chosen people of God. And, you know, you think mm -hmm. about this idea of like inheritance and inheritance, I think sometimes has almost this like materialistic view to it. Like, oh, I inherited yeah. a bunch of money from somebody who passed away. But if you think of it, you know, and that's why I don't want to use the word inheritance, because I think it can be kind of materialized. But if you think about legacy, I think legacy almost has more to do with like a culture or character or, 
like a theme of a family, how they behaved or treated each other. There's something different, I think, with legacy. Like what made this person great? What was the greatness that they left behind defining for their generations? Features. You know, yeah, defining features. I was the grandson of, you know, the great, 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 great grandson of George Washington. You know, it's like, wow, he had a legacy as like the first president and all this cool stuff. It's like, yeah. You know, what's Christopher the legacy? Christopher Tolkien after J.R. Tolkien. Yeah, he like carried on the legacy of his father in his work, you know. And so I think about like, mm -hmm. what's the legacy that we have in Christ? You know, it's like, how is that? How is that something that we can kind of almost rewrite the history books of our family by taking things from the family of God? Now we're in his family and we have this legacy from God. He's the great, great person you know grandfather person that set the legacy into our life that can alter the future generations of our families forever and change kind of our family legacy that's that's kind of my thought with legacy and uh i think my question yeah i think my question for you would be do you feel like there's something and it doesn't necessarily have to be something in the in the idea of like greatness like i shall be remembered in the history books but do you feel like there's something in terms of a legacy that you would want to pass on to future generations in your family hmm. like whether it's your if you had kids or if you nieces and nephews whatever the younger generations is there anything you feel like you'd want to pass on like the the legacy of paul I guess, yeah, huh? Not really, because I just, like, I honestly don't think about myself in that way too much. Mm. Like, a lot of it's, because like, I spend a lot of time being confused and, <laughs> like, unsure. So, um, to have to have that much conviction about like something I'd want to leave behind is like a very, cause like legacy seems very permanent, you know, it's like once you've said it, it's there, you know? And so maybe it's my commitment issues or something. I don't know, but like mm. maybe not commitment issues is the right word, but like that unsuredness like makes it so it'd be like, I don't know, like what is the right thing to leave? I, you know, it's like I could never, makes it hard to like buckle down on something and say like i think for me i would want to help future generations with kind of like sharing wisdom i think that is like a super cool thing to do for future generations and like help you know up and coming people um but then even like, I think about that and it's like some people that tried to share wisdom with me, like I just wasn't in a place to hear it and like still had to just go through the path anyway and make all those mistakes, you know? <laughs> so mm -hmm. I don't even know if that's like relevant, but I guess pe just like help people. Like I would want to encourage people to like, you know, find their, like, I think you quote said it perfectly in the last part where it's like, you know, help people or the CS Lewis thing where you're like getting back to your true self in God. Like, I think that's, what matters and like find that you know that's what i would want to be like remembered for is helping people find that mm. so and people uh, find their their true identity in god yeah you know because i think that like once you start to do that everything makes sense and mm. it like also that kind of thing accounts for the variability in every human mm. because otherwise you're like trying to have a one-size-fits-all rule for everybody Whereas if you instead say like, you know, find out who God made you to be, then it's like that it takes into account all the different personalities and like the different paths people need to take, you know, in life. So, hmm. um, yeah, I don't know. Cause like, as far as legacy, I just, I don't feel like I have that much control over that kind of thing either. You know, it's like some people set out to make a legacy and nobody remembered them five years later. Other people hmm. like just did what they were doing and maybe made like a scientific breakthrough that like changed the world and will never be forgotten. You know, mm. it's like, that. well, but yeah. it's like, 
like what would be things that you know even if it was like your great you know your your grandkids and your great grandkids like maybe just a few more generations you'd pass away and they would remember something about you and they would be like oh yeah you know i i've always kind of done this because this is how my grandpa was and i i saw that example in him you know he was always a great question asker he was always good at like thinking deep mm. about stuff and not being arrogant with his knowledge. He didn't assume he knew everything and he was a humble guy like that. And I, I watched him like that Ooh, as I grew up going, as a kid, keep going. And, you know, <laughs> and so great. that would, and he was really good at making really good food and, you know, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. he was a man of the fields. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. At this point, pretty much him. Yeah. I mean, that would be like nice, I guess. Like, are you thinking like more, like actively cultivating that or as like, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like, how do you become that person today? Right. So the, the follow up of the legacy idea is it's like, okay, if God has given us a legacy, like something to inherit in being a part of his family as Christians that we're like inheriting, uh, like the legacy of him being God and we're like his children. Right. Mm -hmm. And if you think of legacy as like a theme in a family, then it's like, what's something that's from God that I would be passing on to other people, you know? Sure. And well, do you get to like, oh, pick your late, do you get to like pick your legacy or do you think it's more of like something that just like happens organically? I think that there are some things that could be more organic that maybe is just like the the natural like nature of who you are as a person. But mm -hmm. I think that you and this kind of ties back into what we were talking about earlier with transfiguration is it's like what are positive things you could choose now that people will see in you later that will be a part of your legacy, you know? It's like if I were to die and people were to write my eulogy and speak at my funeral, what kind of things mm -hmm. would they say over me? You know, would it be like, oh, Brandon was always a good friend and he always took out the trash whenever it needed. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's like, what what are the things that it's like, Yeah, this was the characteristics of Brandon summarized in a two minute speech that people need to know, you know? Yeah. And I think that when you think about that, like, what do I leave behind to other people when I'm gone? Mm -hmm. And sure, only, you know, I probably won't be written in the history books, only like the immediate people in my life for maybe a couple of generations after me would really remember who I am, mm -hmm. you know, but then it's like, what do I leave to those people? And then do yeah. I leave something to them that they can carry on into the people that they influence? And it is it something that's positive that points them to God and a, being a healthier human being, or did I take away from them and create a negative legacy for them in some way, you know? Yeah. I think that's the the question to ask. How often do you feel like what you would remember about somebody like matches up with what they would want to be known for? Like, cause like, for instance, like say you, you know, die tomorrow, mm -hmm. fingers crossed that doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. Like, and you're like, you want to be remembered for being a good friend because you are and so someone was like at your funeral was like man he was just like the karaoke guy like that's what his mm -hmm. life was all about <laughs> he, he was like mr karaoke like, <laughs> life of the party like that's what he was and you're like ah you know <laughs> that's not i what mean i i definitely think that um people will will speak about you based on their impression, right? Their perspective of you. Like if somebody only ever came to my karaoke parties, mm -hmm. then that's the only thing they would know about me. And I wouldn't expect them to say anything less than that, like, or more than that, really. It's like, okay, that's, that's their only context for knowing me. But for people <laughs> who knew me better, I would expect, <clears throat> Paul, that they would maybe say a little <laughs> bit more than that. <laughs> Whoops, I'll have to go rewrite my eulogy. <laughs> so, so you better write something a little bit more detailed there. <laughs> he also liked Lord of the Rings. Okay, there. Um, <laughs> he was a really deep guy. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, it's like I, I hope that I can live a life where if I think about it and I think about how I interact with people, can I get to a depth with people where I give an impression that would last longer than my lifetime, you know, um, <laughs> whether that's the way I behave, my mannerisms, asking deeper questions, going the extra mile with people, making sure that I'm 
the the most godly person I can be so that when I'm around people, I'm making disciples of them, encouraging them to be godly and follow the Lord. You know, I just think about things like that, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it is interesting when you see like some people or like different people die in a community and it's like some people like the entire town comes out and they're like, this person was involved in like this organization and they did this and they always like were helping their neighborhood and they, you know, gave to the food bank and were volunteering on the fire department and like all this kind of stuff. And like the whole yeah. place comes out and then the other people kind of pass away and nothing is, you know, nothing changes, <laughs> you know, yeah. in people's lives. It's kind of, it's kind of interesting. I mean, I'll share two different stories that correlate with this idea of legacy. The first one was George Mueller, who mm -hmm. was in England and I don't know, maybe 200 years ago or something. And it was mm -hmm. all about him basically deciding that instead of being a pastor of a church and like kind of living the status quo pastor life, or he wanted gay. to just open these orphanages. And his legacy was that it was going to be completely provided by God. He wasn't going to do any kind of asking for donations or anything like that. And there's been a lot of people, not everybody, not, I would say probably not most, but there's been a lot of organizations after that that have tried to follow that same example. We're just going to pray. And if God wants this to happen, he's going to make the money randomly appear and open the doors. You know, we're not going to yeah. go around and try to like make it happen. He left a legacy like that, you know. And after he passed away, I think there were like 10,000 people. I don't know. There were thousands of people who came to his funeral that were like orphans and their families and their kids and people who knew him who came. He had a huge mm -hmm. impact on the future of like Christian nonprofit organizations, you know, ever since then. Mm -hmm. uh, second story was, and I can't remember exactly what his name was, but there was a gentleman, I want to say maybe like 150 years ago, another another person of history who uh so he had some kind of accident that occurred in life and um the a mule newspapers cart. say what <laughs> i'm just kidding i said probably uh, a mule cart <laughs> yeah, maybe i don't know he had some kind of accident he was in the hospital and he used to be like a weapons manufacturer so he was famous at the time for making lots of money off of uh creating guns and ammunitions and all these things and oh. um the newspapers, right? You know where I'm going with the story? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the newspapers. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, Nobel. Yeah, right? The guy yeah. who made the Nobel Prize. Mm -hmm. The newspapers wrote his obituaries and were like, the, the Lord of Death is finally dead himself. <laughs> and like the guy who made all these weapons and is known for all this destruction and killing is finally gone. Uh, and he read that and was like, this isn't how I want to be remembered. And so he took all of his money and decided to create the Nobel Prize because he's like, I want to be remembered for celebrating the good things people do for life and like yeah. building humanity and, and civilization and peace, yeah. you know? Yeah. So that was, you know, instances where people saw their lives and were like, I want to do something different. And in the instance of Nobel, it was a specific one about his legacy. How do I want to be remembered? And so I just think, what's the pivotal moment in life where I'll think to myself, I want to be remembered differently. You know, I want to leave behind something to future generations or my family or the people in my community where they remember me for something maybe more than I am today, or I want to do something different for the uh, people who, who outlive me, you know, like, do you have a person? Go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. Yeah. What was it? I was going to say, do you have like a current perception of what you think people would close to you would remember you for? or like a defining characteristic that you think people close to you would all agree upon? Um, yeah, I think that there's like a few things that just in my own perspective and in like based on what some people say, like I think people would say that I'm a good listener when I'm talking to people, that I'm good at praying for other people, that I'm good at being available in people's lives. Um, you know, I think that people would say stuff like that about me and I don't know, maybe there would be other things, but just based off of like compliments I've received from people over the years, we they're like, send oh, you're good at doing this or that or whatever. What questionnaires with like, we should send out questionnaires with like five slots to fill out answers and then oh, yeah? do it like Surveys. family, you know, like family feud. Yeah. Like, <laughs> we surveyed a hundred Americans and 57 of them said 
listening. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> Whatever. That Brandon sucked. <laughs> <laughs> that was the poor. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, dude, if. And then the other thing, like to your point about the Nobel guy, it's like, I kind of think of uh, maybe Ebenezer Scrooge a little bit too, but, um, you know, it's like, the interesting thing is like, if people knew what those legacies were that they were making right now, like, would it affect like their life in any significant way? You know, like it obviously affected the Nobel guy, right? But, like, you know, if you, if, if you just, if people took these surveys, you know, or like took their their friends took the surveys or whatever and then they got to see the results like would it change would people start changing their lives left and right to like try to augment those things at all or change them you know yeah i don't know maybe maybe we should make that a website mm. where you go to the website and you share the contact info of a bunch of people on your contact <laughs> list and it'll send a little survey form to those people and be like we'd like you to write the the obituary for this person it's go like ahead and roast them. Say all the, something. yeah say the <laughs> say all the good and the bad just be brutally honest and it'll just come to that person anonymously <laughs> and they'll just have yeah. to receive all these like you know, life, you life people criticisms. suing your platform for emotional damages dude <laughs> like after that did they get their life their mind wrecked uh. <laughs> i mean it just you know it's just i mean yeah depends on who you send it to because you might send it to somebody who's just <laughs> like wants to be a jerk and say terrible things Bitter. or or it also kind of depends on who you are as a person like yeah maybe maybe you're the jerk you know i don't know yeah well usually like i think if you're if you're gonna have people who are close to you that are gonna say a bunch of bad things that's probably a more reflection on your character even than unfortunately than necessarily yeah. even theirs if you're yeah. surrounded by those people that would like just throw you under the bus mm. <laughs> need to get some new friends or yeah attract different people by being a different person i suppose yeah i don't know but yeah so huh. yeah no you know whether i mean the survey thing or self-reflection or asking people but yeah the idea of like what's the legacy i would leave how do i you know what kind of behaviors do i have today that maybe i want to leave behind for people in the future i don't know you you sounded skeptical at the beginning but honestly i feel like if i were to just predict <laughs> you know like paul jr baby baby paul grown up and like 40 <laughs> years old or whatever like in the future i feel like i could predict how your kid would be based off of a lot of your behaviors like i almost could see <laughs> this is like some of the legacy of paul whether you like can see it in yourself or not i feel like there's things i could see that i That's wouldn't be genetics, surprised bro. if i saw it no, maybe it's know. genetics but i don't know maybe i think it would be yeah. a bit of nurture you know the the way that you're you're mm -hmm. like treating the people around you you know totally i could I yeah think and there's, there's like themes. epigenetics and stuff like that too where it's like mm -hmm. by creating the environment you even change the genetics a little bit you know so like there yeah. is that whole yeah thing which i totally I, like the psychology aspect of it. Yeah. I definitely could see that how you like shape, you know, well, I mean you shape the world around you, but yeah, like the things you spend the most time with and the most attention towards are like the things you would shape the most and yeah. like kids and family are very open to being shaped, you know, even in even older members of like family or, you know, immediate family type stuff. Like it's amazing how fast things can transform when just like one person transforms in a family mm. or whatnot mm. it's like it's like a virus spreading ideas and different things <laughs> yeah huh. yeah if one person's yeah really inspired and making a bunch of changes if they're transfiguring yeah. then uh <laughs> yeah then other people see that and they're like i want to do it too give me some of that yeah. transfer figuration it's, in it's infectious do you feel like that's yeah. happened in your family ever at all yeah, I mean, when I got the bug to move, then I felt like everybody yeah, else in my family start, wanted to move too, you know? Yeah, Or true. a lot of times if I hang out with my family and I tell them about my current workout routine, then they'll all be like, oh, <laughs> let's not eat dessert and let's all go to the gym more. <laughs> and they all want to work out, you know? Yeah, that's or, cool. Like when you're I don't know, there's a lot of, you're doing, yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff yeah. that I'll, I actually, I, I think the biggest, and I'm kind of on this like physical uh, theme here right now, but I actually think mm -hmm. that one of the biggest ways I see this ripple effect influence occur with other people is when I do my uh, like sober October thing. You know, oh. like usually, <laughs> usually once a month in the fall, I don't drink any alcohol for the whole month. And this year it was October, mm -hmm. but sometimes in the past it's December because December is like the most sugar, unhealthy diet <laughs> inducing month for most people, you know, but, um, yeah. but you know, when I don't have alcohol, then you go out to eat with friends and the waitress asks like, Oh, would you guys like anything besides water, alcohol, excuse me, <laughs> something that costs more money that you can spend here anyway. And, yeah. and as soon, and everybody's like, Oh, I don't know. Should we have wine or cocktails or beer? And what are you going to get Brandon? <laughs> and as soon as I'm like, Oh, I'll just have nothing because <laughs> I'm not having alcohol for this <laughs> month or whatever, because I want to be healthy. Then everybody else is suddenly like, Oh, like, mm -hmm. Oh, maybe we should maybe we should do that too and then everybody kind of poo poos on it it's like yeah let's all, let's just all not have alcohol and i've noticed that whenever <laughs> i do down that the social trend yeah whenever whenever i do that i notice that a lot of people around me do not have alcohol when i'm not having alcohol it's crazy yeah. i'm not trying to tell them that they shouldn't i'm not like i'm not having it so you shouldn't either i'm just like <laughs> oh i'm just not because my own reasons yeah. And everybody else is like, oh, yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, let's do that too. It's <laughs> yeah. really funny, you know? Saving people money and liver. Way to go, yeah. dude. I think it's surprising <laughs> how easily we can influence other people, whether we think yeah. we are or not, you know? Yeah. And it and seems that's all, real... it seems organic, but it's, but it's, you know, it, it's like very effective. Go ahead. I was going to say that I think that's the real legacy right there is like all the subtle impact you have on people that you'll never see or know, you know, mm. it's like, like you, you've literally changed the world by existing, but you, most of the time you won't realize it, you know? Mm. So like you're constantly leaving legacy or, or fingerprints or whatever, like, you know, traces in the world. And so like, that's where I see like real legacy, I guess. But mm. I don't think you'll, it's something you can't really detect. So it's hard to like point mm. to anything, you know, but hopefully it's just every, every moment of your life that you've lived with integrity. Mm. Yeah. That was, that was profound, man. I'm not going to say anything better after that. I just cut it <laughs> off right there. That was great. Okay. Gosh. Cool. I'm glad we can end it there. That's my legacy. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> forever memorialized in a podcast yep uh, all right <laughs> well thanks for uh, tuning in everybody yeah we That's had good. uh the transfiguration and the legacy there you go people yeah. transform your legacy That's right <laughs> all right stay inspired that's right see ya Let's be inspired bye <laughs>